here we explore thermal stress generated in birds connected in parallel exposed to rise of temperature. The illustration below describes the next question. There are two outer birds with Young's modulus and linear coefficients of thermal expansion of E1 and alpha 1 respectively. In addition, there is another bar in the middle with Young's modulus and linear coefficients of thermal expansion of E2 and alpha 2 respectively. Here, alpha 1 is larger than alpha 2. These bars are fixed on the wall and together held by a rigid plate. Then, we also apply a temperature change from T0 to T1 to these three bars. The problem is to find out the thermal stresses in the bars under this temperature change. Here, you should note that the strains produced in the three bars are equivalent in this deformation. This is the first point in this problem. You may think that this problem is similar to the previous problem where the bars are connected in parallel and an external load P is applied. In fact, the solution process is very similar. You may focus on how this problem differs from the statically indeterminate problem that we have solved before. We start by defining the axial forces acting on each bar as P1 and P2. Note that both outer bars have equivalent axial force, so we can define both as P1. Then, you firstly should note that the sum of these three forces is zero because no load is applied on the plate part in the rigid body from the outside. The value of the added load acting on the three bars must be zero to satisfy the balance of the external forces. In other words, when the axial force acting on the outer bars is positive, the force acting on the center bar must be negative which means compressive force to keep these forces balanced. Next, we are considering the two outer bars. The sum of the thermal strain and the elastic strain is given by the equation. The thermal strain is calculated as linear coefficients of thermal expansion multiplied by temperature change the elastic strain is calculated from the axial force P1. P1 is divided by the cross-section area to get the thermal stress. The thermal stress is divided by the Young's modulus to get the thermal strain. Those who are confused should be clear with the following flow in the argument. Stress is calculated as the load divided by the cross-section area. Then, elastic strain is the stress divided by the Young's modulus. The sum of this elastic strain and thermal strain is the strain of both the upper and lower bars. The center bar can be considered in similar process. Thermal strain is the temperature change multiplied by the linear coefficient of thermal expansion. The elastic stress is the load P2 divided by cross-section area. The elastic strain is the elastic stress divided by the Young's modulus. It is given by this equation. By using these conditions, we can find the elongation of each bar, lambda 1 and lambda 2. 
the lengths of the bars are all L. Therefore, the elongation of the bars, which are lambda 1 and lambda 2, is epsilon 1, multiplied by L and epsilon 2, multiplied by L, respectively. Let's review what we have obtained so far. The point of this problem is to first define the laws acting on the three bars as unknown values. The laws at both the top and bottom bars are given as the equivalent axial force, P1. The axial force on the center bar is defined as P2. The elastic and thermal strains are then derived from these axial forces. And then, the elongation of each bar can be calculated. In the calculation, the balancing condition of the axial forces expressed by P1 and P2 must be satisfied. Now, you should be noted that the unknown values are P1 and P2, and we lack one equation to determine these values. Then, we need another equation. The equation is obtained by considering the condition that the elongation of the bars is all equal. So, we get the equation. This equation describes the situation that the elongation of the upper and lower bars are equal to the elongation of the center bar. Next, we simultaneously solve these equations. The unknown values here are P1 and P2, the axial forces in the bars. You are simultaneously solving these equations for this P1 and P2. Then, you get the axial forces of the upper and lower bars, as well as the center bar, as the equations. In this problem, we have a condition that alpha 2 is larger than alpha 1. Now, we get P1 as positive and P2 as negative. So, at this stage, the calculation results show that the center bar is in compression, and the bars on both sides are in tension. You may notice that the condition is satisfied. I guess this point should be very clear to understand. The answer we have to find in this problem is the thermal stress. So, the thermal stress for the upper and lower bars, sigma 1, is given by dividing P1 by the cross-section area A as the equation. For the center bar, sigma 2, P2 is divided by the cross-section area A as the equation. These are the answer to this problem. 